Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for week number three of the second season of KCM 2024. We're getting started with Snow versus Speed. Let's jump into game number one. All right, it's looking good here today, Shin. And we're going to start off with this matchup, which is, uh, <laughs> it's got to be a little bit rough, like mentally for speed to, to try and start off uh, this week. You know that he got completely smashed in ASL. I think that's okay to talk about at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say as enough time has progressed that we can start talking a little bit about that stuff. And he, he had a pretty okay showing in the last week of KCM. Um, very successful two-port Wraith build on Retro when he was in Bottom One. Um, yeah, so I would like to see him perform well again here. Protoss looks super serious this time, Snow, Mini, and Bisu. I'm also kind of liking the Zerg lineup, Jadong, Hero, and Queen. I'm not 100% confident about Queen just yet, but hopefully he can start to shine again soon. And we also got Russian JYJ getting a little bit of limelight, and I'm all about it. Jadong in the lineup. I think that uh, this should be a very fun week. But... Uh, I'm scared for speed right now. He has to be feeling the pressure. He had a terrible performance versus Snow. Maybe that is a, a fire for him. Maybe that's a, a motivator, though. Coming up with better styles, coming up with uh, tighter builds, and better defense against Reaver, which pulled him apart uh, in that set, in that series versus Snow. It was... Uh, Probably one of the, the the most efficient bops we've ever seen in ASL, wouldn't you agree? I would say so. That's that's for sure. I mean, uh, it is snow though, so it's like hard to compare. You know, these kind of like mid-range Terran players against Snow's caliber of play in PVT, but. Actually, this game, Speed went for 11 guests, so he's already like going really fast into tech. This game does give him more options available to be a little bit more aggressive and what have you, and get sharper timings. And Snow, inversely, is just playing super standards thus far, just an in-base gateway, nothing crazy. So it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. I'm wondering if the fast gas from Speed will help him out here against Snow. Looks like we'll have a pretty quick Nexus out of Snow as well. He was pulling... Or he had, he was adding probes onto the gas really slowly here. I don't think Gazelle is going to be popping out either. Straight into Dragoon. I think this will this will do well against what speed is is going for because uh, he's hoping to get a vulture out on the map really really quick and just with one yeah. Dragoon in the natural waiting and a Nexus on the way. I think Snow's going to be feeling like a pretty he's in a pretty good spot. Um, what what is the follow-up though from speed are we gonna have like a star port for a drop or are we gonna go you know something crazy here so we can get a little bit of an advantage going over snow try to make the game a little yeah. crazy it's a little hard to say because terran players seem to really have different vibes about this map and the way they approach it there is even more go. nervous it's gonna be a straight up two factory play which uh, i can't really fault him for it's a good map to go uh, for the, a kind of two fact play on it's not a build you see very often it's not as potent as it used to be back in the day pros players way more uh, adept at dealing with that but as we can see speed is just like you know neglecting uh, preventing any possibility of scouting information but this is a little bit suspicious or Already. He's trying to make it look like he wants to throw down a bunker and just kind of expand, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to put a lot of pressure right now, but I think Snow kind of smells something is up already, so I don't think he's going to be totally dead to this by all means, but Speed could still maybe kill him with this. There's always that potential. Everyone who's played Protoss on ladder will know that the two factory is a, a deadly build. Uh, especially if you're caught off guard, but even if you happen to scout it, uh, the proper response is not always known, but uh, here at, as Snow, if he f smells this at all, if he senses that this is coming, uh, he should have no problem holding it. It's just how long can this be disguised here by speed? Yeah. How long can he keep this under wraps? Uh, will it be long enough to... Uh, spring the trap here on snow and get the quick win that he's looking for robotics facility already on the way no second gateway though uh, very importantly there's not going to be many dragoons to fight this and he's coming across the map now with the first tank 
upgrades are on the way and we just got snow right inside the natural it's not it doesn't mean that he's gonna win right now but this is a good situation for speed for this two two factory to have the best chance of winning yeah, it's going to be three Dragoons just holding in the, the choke point in the natural, which is one of the better scenarios he could have hoped for. There's no second gate where he's going to be ra waiting on Reavers to come out, and that will maybe provide him enough opportunity to come in here and set up a nice pocket uh, siege to really uh, put the, the pain onto Snow. And he's, he's coming in just as he's setting up a wall as well, so extra damage is going to be going down on these Dragoons on the exit. Already shaved off two of the shields of those Dragoons, and now pushing all the way through into natural expansion, laying mines in the wake of the Marines to tank as many of those shots as possible and now uh, prevent, uh, providing a very safe retreat back outside the choke point and pushes back in again to get even more damage done onto these dragoons so far a lot of these dragoons are really softened up so so far so good from speed but he needs to be careful not to take any hits onto this tank oh the mind connection actually changes the math here massively i was looking at this and feeling really good about uh, how snow was holding the push originally he was dealing with all the mines as they came down now I'm going to pull the probes to try and surround this tank. Can he actually kill that? Citizens arrest here. Can he get it? He does. He picks off the tank. Mostly with probes with one shot from the Dragoon finishing it. Do we have a Reaver? No, the shuttle is here, but the Reaver is not. And the last Dragoon is about to go down. This is great targeting by speed. A lot of good mines here as well. Anything that pops out of this gateway is going to get instantly wrecked. Another big mine connection takes out that last Dragoon. And this is just... A straight up win for speed. Game number one. Revenge for the loss in ASL. The upset here is massive to start out this week. Moving on to game number two. We've got Queen spawning here in the top left hand corner. Speed in the bottom right on Troy. It's almost time to say goodbye to this map. Shun, how do you feel about that? Uh... It's, it's bittersweet. I mean, on the one hand, it's not a very balanced map, but on the other hand, it gives some pretty interesting games. So as a spectator, I, I can't say I completely hate it because it does give us some very interesting scenarios to cast and enjoy. But I can see how it's a frustrating game to play if you're competing and you don't want to deal with these kinds of weird wonky imbalances. So overall, I'd say I'm happy to see it on the way out, but there is a bit, a bit of sweetness there too. I definitely agree. I know that I've uh, splashed my fair share of salt on this map. I've um, disparaged this this map quite a bit, but it is better than a lot of the uh, crazy maps that we've had in the ASL in the past and that it's given us a lot of good games. I don't enjoy playing on it. I'll be happy when it's gone, but I hope we get something better for our next crazy map. Uh, and that's not always the case. Oftentimes we're going for something much worse, so... Um, high hopes for the future, but a bittersweet farewell to this map. Maybe this will be the crowning jewel here. Maybe this will be the the uh, match that we all remember from Troy. Queen versus Speed here with a, uh, early pool and an early gas here uh, from Speed. This is uh, going to be an interesting start to this game. I'm not sure who's going to come out to, on top on this one. It's an economic nine pool going up against potentially mech or a one 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 build and uh, speed is completely walling in so he's also giving the option here maybe considering another two port wraith play which is what he did on retro against zerg so we should see if he goes for another two port wraith style here or if he's gonna just do it more like one 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 or mech style he is very adept with that style i would say he's he's one of the stronger players with the two port wraith uh, able to get great damage in the early game and has a lot of finesse behind his early gameplay i think that's um one of his uh, the reasons behind his moniker the 10 minute flash he's just got a lot of good early game sense and execution but struggles in the late game now sending out the marine here might just be his downfall one marine just gonna yeah. hand, send out on the map and as that bunker uh, lands he will be able to repair through any damage that's coming out onto this supply depot but he's gonna have to pull a lot of scvs and it's gonna be a while before the uh, marine is out here able to push back these uh, zealots so are these links excuse me so getting quite a bit of tax damage is queen and now going after the assimilator he's gonna get this one for sure can he get the one on the left as well because if he kills both of these doesn't matter if you're going air or not it's 
it's gonna make life incredibly difficult for speed yeah i think he's going for the two port wraith play either way so he's probably happy with this overall uh yeah and the scv repair was pretty clutch by him very well calculated you need about one scvs per two lings but that's not like a perfect repair eventually the lings will win but it will buy you enough time for the marine to you know to make the lings have to run away and what have you um so he's handled this early game pretty well what we were saying earlier that's one of the things he is good at is his forte but him floating the factory like this i don't know if this is a good idea he's just really just like showing him his full hand and, like this is what I'm doing this game. I'm just gonna go two four rave. I don't know if this is the smartest of the things here from speed. Well, he can't. He can't build the vulture inside the main because it can't get out of the natural Maybe anymore. Maybe vulture drop or something. I don't know. Like it just mm. it just makes it just makes it like oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's okay, but I, I, a little bit about it makes me feel a bit yeah. Well, look at how quick this hydralis then is. Maybe you're right. He just knows. Like okay, well two port wraith. I'll just build hydras. Counter this completely. And yeah, just just build what four hydras here and then just drone heavy. Uh, I think that's gonna put you in a great position as a Zerg player. Gotta pull back these overlords though. Looks like he is slowly pulling some of them back. He tr lands to try and build a vulture. I'm amazed that he was even able to get the land there. It seemed like Queen was right on top of that. Um, but I think the vulture will probably get captured right off the bat. He could make like a little space for it. Okay, he's just going to lift off cancel. This is really weird from speed. Yeah, I was a little bit confused about the factory play. I guess if Queen was playing worse, this vulture play would have made more sense. Um, but uh, we'll see how, what happens uh, in the main base so far. Uh, not really any drones being killed, just softening them up a little bit. And the Hydra timing is going to be pretty much effective enough to avoid any losses for the time being besides maybe some overlords going down to micro one just did fail to micro there but did take a lot of damage on that wraith as well so but yeah i would say overall this is pretty pretty good defense from queen he's gonna lose a total of two overlords because of this one out on the map as well uh as long as he made a few as backups he doesn't get supply blocked for like more than a, a minute then he's gonna be sitting fine well this is still a little scary losing two overlords uh, so quickly so rapidly like this uh, he's not going to be able to make hydras or uh, drones and there's only one hydra in the main base if we come across the map with four wraiths right now uh the potential for some damage now he's going to come out and build a barracks or a bunker here on the high ground start his cc in a moment and defend with the wraiths and marines until he gets that online i guess he's planning for a longer game and queen will have to take a third base but i don't know this seems scary to me we don't even have proper flow between our main and natural we can transfer scvs we can move uh, marines but building factories in the main and trying to build tanks it's just it it's not going to make no. sense here we need to get that factory out into the natural and landed with a machine shop i think as soon as possible but it doesn't seem like that's in the cards for speed just yet i think he's worried about the hydra bus potential he knows that queen is the kind of player that would be tempted to make like 12 hydras as soon as possible and try and just run into your base early game he, d he does do that kind of play sometimes so he's a little bit wary of that queen instead just being a bit active in uh, keeping the race at bay by trying to put on some pressure but it's like speed's not buying anything that queen's selling he's just going straight for queen snatcher right now there's not that many hydras here as well so speed can abuse this position a little bit but uh it seems like he's unable to get any snipes on those Hydras, so for the main for the time being he's got to go into the main base even get anything there there's actually only two okay there's three hydras in the main base so he won't die but if it's just like two hydras caught out of position then queen queen's in a little bit of trouble but so far he's only got like three drones and now he's losing a few in the main base overall this is pretty successful from speed now that he's killing all these drones until that time i would say i was very queen sided but catching these wraiths on the exit a lot of damage done to these wraiths only three wraiths remaining now saying so i would say overall now this is a lot more queen sided for the time being yeah, big swings back and forth there as drones go down and then the wraiths fall it gives a lot of leeway here to Queen. He can move out and not be so worried about losing tons of workers back at home. But maybe he moved a bit too fast. Still enough wraiths here to one shot those workers. And this is so many Hydras. Uh, you're, you're totally right about Queen being the type of guy to just pull up uh, an attack with a ton of uh, Hydras. And it looks like he's actually maybe going for a drop. 
Are we yeah. ready for a drop? A drop into the main would be insanely sick. We don't have any tanks or much movement between the two bases. If he drops in the main and kills the assimilator, can you imagine? Yeah. And the ranks are out of position, so this is going to be a successful drop. There's only Marines in the natural, and Marines, like, without medic support and stim, they're not going to do a lot against these Hydras. And this is four full overlords worth of Hydras, so 16 Hydras coming into the main base, and some lurkers being morphed as a kind of, like, backup insurance policy, making sure some critical damage is done. He's going to go straight after the techs, kill the academy. This is going to be a huge clutch move. He's got his own lurkers on the way, and he's completely shut down the tech of speed even if this drop wasn't super successful the damage has already been done at this point speed desperately trying to snipe these overlords so these cloak rays can go to work but keeping this overlord on the left hand flank meanwhile keeping it alert now the lurkers are finished then coming to do a lot of damage not only to these bio units but mainly the scv lines after they've cleared up these marines this in oh this is so sick by queen a moment of brilliance here just unloading masses of hydras and making lurkers in the main. GG is called. Speed taps out. This was a sick, sick move from Queen. Those, that maybe not the highlight of Troy, but this is a good example of why Troy is pretty fun map to watch and also a, quite a frustrating map to play on. There's so many different strange strategies that can come out. Uh, interesting uh, games that can be played on that map. Mini is our next contender here. Spawning on Blitz Y versus Queen in the bottom right. The two-player map. Kind of strategy we're going to see out of Mini. Always a blast to see this guy perform, compete. He has a lot of unique styles and unique approaches, especially in this matchup. Yeah, um, it's going to be a gateway first out of Mini by the looks of it, uh, since he's not probe scouting. Um, he does, he's a very emotional player, but when he is playing his A game, it is a bit of a treat to watch, and he's, he's, he's pretty, pretty good in this matchup as well. Um, uh, Queen inversely, haven't seen him perform super solidly recently. I don't know how he stacks up to Mini right now. Uh, just going to be a standard overpool from him, nothing crazy to combat this early pressure from Mini. Oh, there's been some, a few good games out of Queen more recently, but yeah, nothing that tells me he's back to his uh, previous form, his two-time ASL winning form. It's a little bit of shaky ground for Queen, and he's already failed to block the probe coming in on the ramp. Some pathing issue there with the drone means that this probe is going to get in and see everything immediately and also block that natural from being taken. So Queen forced to take bottom left as his natural base, which is not optimal. You can't get a very quick transfer down there to the third and you could come under a lot of pressure by this early zealot play yeah i'm actually kind of impressed by queen's control of this uh, drone as well he's already bullied the drone scout out of the main base and it does mean that he's more likely to get the guaranteed placement of this hatchery although mini's still trying to challenge for that uh, despite the lings being in the pro's presence he wants to really be as annoying as possible here queen's almost got enough minerals for it so it shouldn't actually matter that he blocked for a moment that he's still going to get the hatchery down on time so yeah i'm kind of uh happy to see where this game goes i mean so far nothing crazy has happened Second Zelt is making its way forward. Queen will need at least eight lings to deal with that threat. It's going to force more larva into those defensive units. With the probe here as well, it can mess with the map. Just eight lings might, you know, all die to the two Zealot plus probe combo if not engaged properly and Queen is aware of that. He's got nothing in the natural to defend, so he's just kind of scouting the front here, seeing what's coming. And baiting these zealots to try and come forward to see if there's more links popping, and indeed there were enough links to deal with this threat. And in fact, Mini's just going to turn around and head back home, hoping that there were more links than necessary built. 
Yeah, that's basically the main objective here for Mini is to try and force as many Zerglings as possible before running back. And the Overlord doesn't see those Zealots running back until the very last moment. So if you're a little bit, you know, more timid as a Zerg player, you do tend to overmake Zerglings. And uh, it's usually safer to still make some Zerglings because they sometimes will try and call your bluff and just keep the Zealots rolling all the way into your base as well. Mm -hmm. One game in the feud, so you can't always just not make Lings. So it does kind of force you to stay honest as a Zerg player. Looking very honest here, Queen, with about 10 lings now out in front of Mini's base. He's not able to deny scouting, though, despite having so many lings in the early game. He's being completely scouted. Everything is known for Mini for now. He's going to try to loop this pro back towards the main, but... Queen is on a collision course with that. I think he gets it. No, nope. looks like it stays alive. I'm just taking a look at the mini map. Probe still alive, but denied from getting in the main and seeing this layer. And the, the Stargate's only just now gone down, so I would say, like, this is a little bit slow from Mini, so he won't have the good confirmation timing on exactly what Queen's doing, so... I'm curious to see what Mini's re reaction will be to Queen's style, because I imagine Qu um, Queen is just going to do a very standard 3-hatch Spire into 5-6 hatch Hydra, but I'm, I'm curious, because of this slightly later Stargate, if he's going to be a lot more hesitant to scout um, in the early game, um, because he, he might not be able to feel confident enough to scout until he's got 6 4 Yeah. Well, with non-stop Zealot production and no sacrifices made, to that zealot number early on. Oh, four drones on the gas. Yeah. It's a little bit rough from Queen. He knows his and fixes now. Okay, he's just fixed it now. With this many zealots coming forward, it is a big threat. Oh, Mini gonna turn around again. This is getting pretty annoying for Queen, who built another round of Zerglings, and he's not gonna be able to fight these Zealots before they have plus one in speed. Yeah, so just to break this down into fundamentals for all range of our players, this is really annoying for Zerg, because they don't want to wait for the plus one to finish on the Zealots, and then they can start two-shotting the Zerglings and kill them more efficiently later on. They want to force the trade as soon as possible, so it's annoying for Zerg if they don't get a good trade with these Zealots before that the upgrade becomes relevant. It does look like they will be able to get a pincer surround on these zealots from both sides of the zone. Yeah, this is uh, overcommitment here from Mini, and he's going to get completely surrounded. He's doing the best that he can to take the uh, most inefficient up, uh, engagement for the Zerg player, but looks like in the end, all the links will go down, all the zealots will fall. And, yeah, not really getting too much out of those early Zealots. Now, the follow-up push, when that plus one is done, is not going to go very well for Mini. He's going to have a lot less Zealots for that follow-up attack, and he just killed two Overlords. You know what? I'm, I, I feel like this is completely even right now. Even though we just saw all the Zealots go down and Mini can't really do too much pressure, he got those two Overlords at a pretty important time. Yeah, as long as the Corsair makes it back home, well, it's getting cut off. Trying to track that down. The Scourge have such bad vision range. It's really, really tough to, to catch this. It's almost impossible to find it. And it will make its way back home. So, yeah. What I said stands. This is this is uh, pretty darn even. Jumping in here with two Zealots. This is kind of a funny play that... Mini's doing right now. He knows that it's unlikely a Queen would have made any uh, additional links after taking that fight and killing off every Zealot. So he sends two more Zealots and tries to get in here, but I just pop right. out at the perfect time, handle those Zealots, and hardly any damage comes on at all. No drones dead. Yeah, it's a nice idea. I mean, a weaker Zerg player might have been a little bit slower in their macro cycles. Hydra's a little bit slow in uh, popping out the eggs and maybe you catch a few drones and what have you. Uh, and yeah, it's a good good timing from him to try and exploit any window possible. Now we see the Corsairs coming out in a bit of a stronger force. Now at a count of five, we'll start killing these overlords much faster. So Queen will probably want to pump up to about one and a half, two control groups worth of Hydra's um, after these rounds of drones now because he's going to want to make sure he's like super safe against the Corsairs and super safe against any Zealot Templar that comes his way in the time being. Well, you know, that earlier engagement with the two Zealots, it's such a small Zealot force right now. Only two Zealots here. Three Zealots maybe total. Trying to come into the natural. Look at how weak this push is for Mini. This is all due to the earlier Zealot kills, but 
Yeah. Uh, it was a gamble play from many. It didn't end up working out, but I, I understand the thought process was behind it. You know, you're talking about a weaker Zerg player might have missed that macro round. Also, uh, maybe, you know, he might have gotten lucky and that two over those two Overlord kills might have uh, supply blocked right. and forced Queen not to make those Hydras. So, you know, he might have gotten a little bit more damage, but... Queen luckily got the Hydra started before that supply block came through. He had extra overlords uh, in production, so he ends up uh, flowing directly into Hydras without any bump in the road. And now he's in a really good spot with quite a lot of Hydras. A sunken colony here as well, and multiple overlords just in case the, the uh, first overlord gets sniped. He's not going to die to DTs here. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice effort from Mini though. It's like you lean on your opponent and wait for resistance, and as soon as he provides resistance, you kind of let off a little bit, and that's kind of like StarCraft. You keep leaning on your opponent until he shows you weakness, then you exploit the weakness. But if they show you resistance, then you just back off and wait for another time, right? Mm -hmm. Don't see any weaknesses here for Queen at the moment. Neither does Mini as he scouts the main. Plenty of forces around and. He's ready for anything that might be thrown at him and starting to move out on the map with a small group of Hydras and an Overlord in tow. Just going to come in and check what Mini is up to. Mini has enough Zealots to deal with this, but uh, this is a fast force of Hydras. They can easily fall back and run away from the Zealots in case there's a full-on engage. Yeah, and the theory behind here with the Hydras is you, at this point in the game, they're not going to have that many Dragoons, so you know it's purely a Zealot Temple of Threat, and you want to engage that out on the map and micro back away from the storms. You don't want to wait for them to come to your side of the map and start storming you while you're already, like, you know, stuck in your own Sim City and you're losing units and drones and you can't get your own surface area to fight the, the Zealot Threat. So this is really smart from Queen to be active out on the map with the Hydras at all times at this stage in the game. Yeah, absolutely, and I just saw on the minimap, I believe it was the DT went running into the Hydras and died. So those type of little pickups can only happen if you're active on the map with your Hydras. And like you said, necessary to do this if you don't want to get stormed in your natural. You can't be hiding behind your wall. At this point in the game, the Templar threat is too real. Lurkers running up here. Getting on top of this catwalk and into a very nice position. No. Oh, oh my god, the storm on the left hand side cannot be coming up that ramp there. Way too clumped up uh, with the hydras. There's only one more storm potentially. Wow, a lot of this stuff is getting wrecked. Mini is trying to get one more Templar to the front here, but great dodge from Queen. And as he gets uh, on top of these Dragoons with pure Hydra, this is going to go very poorly for Mini. Another storm comes out right at the end there. And Queen is going to focus down what he can, but Mini actually will hold for now. Yeah, this is a powerful macro cycles coming out of Queen as well. Supply is currently uh, just about even. Finally, Mini racing ahead with his macro cycle. But this is looking very Queen sided right now. There's going to be a couple of storms left in the pocket of Mini to pull out in a moment here. I'm not sure it's going to be a sharp enough tool for the job. A lot of Hydras are going to be pressuring this expansion, probably getting the cancel on that. And if more of these Dragoons and Templars go down, there's not going to be a strong enough force from Mini to retake this third anytime soon. So. This is a very well done push. Uh, by Queen. Really surprised that Mini wanted to come out and take that base uh, without the help of an observer when he saw the Lurker eggs being morphed at the natural of Queen. He knew that it was a threat. He thought that he could hold it with the Dragoons that he had, but more Lurkers are being made now. Uh, and after losing this third base, Mini's hopes are looking dire. It's looking very rough for him here. Another great storm and a good group of Hydras. But there's so much behind this, and Queen is just going to end up containing Mini here really soon. 
I mean, there's a very hopeful DT out on the map right now, saying making its way down to the bottom left. I don't think it's going to be too successful. There's already a sunken over there. But even sniping some of these observers now, moving into the critical contained position. Those lurkers are usually very stormable, but there is no high templars in sight, so it's not going to really matter that they're clumped up so much. And now able to take full advantage on these dragoons out of position, getting the kill on this final cannon, moving the lurkers up into a good position enough so that he can just now bust down the wall and snipe the forge. And here these DTs uh, trying to do some desperate. Uh, efforts of a comeback in the bottom left being just fruitless they're saying as we just saw and now this forge is going to go down and some of the production and eventually the natural will have to be evacuated UG finally called and it looks like Zerg are just so dominant this season so wow Queen looking incredibly impressive in that last game able to take down mini and now two protoss players have been eliminated that is crazy snow mini bisu is such a sick lineup and yeah. protoss just falling flat here so far it's, i mean uh, it's a very tough nut to swallow right it's shocking it's shocking <laughs> indeed tough nut to swallow well Queen looking like the old queen, not the new queen, but can he continue his success against Rush now spawning in the top left hand corner, Citadel is the map, very strong map for tank pushes, whether or not we're going to see that here from Rush remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going to be uh, just a normal hatchery first here from Queen. I'm not sure if he's going to go for the 11 super fast or just probably standard 12. Yeah, it's looking like that 12 uh, hatchery. One way that Terran players I've noticed have been uh, countering this 12 hatchery play rather than going for 8 racks. Uh, I first saw it flash doing it on ladder but he's been going for cc first and i i haven't seen a lot of cc first uh, until recently it feels like he's been having a bit of influence we're not going to have that in this case but it's something to mention cc first is making a comeback right now yeah, Flash is the kind of guy where he, he looks at the meta and he has this kind of internalized... I'm not, it's probably a subconscious thought, but he's probably thinking to himself like something along the lines of, like, I don't follow the meta, the meta follows me. He'll do whatever he wants, and eventually what he does will trickle into the meta rather than the other way around. He will obviously look for the problems in... I think recently he was having problems upgrade Terran against Protoss, and he's re recently been figuring out, okay, I need to, to make more factories and go up to seven factories before I start my, my fourth CC. And he's going to make those kind of micro adjustments to like really figure out the game and he'll hit timings that you are not prepared for he'll, he'll go for uh, styles that most players don't go for because the windows to abuse your opponent are so razor thin and your execution has to be so high that it's usually not worth it but flash makes it worth it and that's what's different about the guy hitting those razor thin timing attacks something that rush is no stranger to this guy basically made his career in tvz off of the two racks play there's something that basically everyone can do well but he does it at a, a higher level like an excellent he has an excellence yeah. uh, in his two racks play that uh few can match queen gonna be very familiar with that type of style but what can he pull out here to combat that will it be the 2.5 hatch or is he gonna pull out something a little different he's got 300 minerals in the bank i believe he's about to throw that down an extra hatchery no it will be some sort of two hatch spire play it's interesting yeah, I mean, back in the day, Zero uh, Queen was basically known for only playing two hatch muter. He, he actually used to go twelve pool two hatch muter a lot. Uh, he, was, he was very good at it. Very very strong high level execution player. He's, he's and he's very he's able to to pick up all those old skills that he used to have and you know incorporate them into his modern meta. Even though he's more of a macro player now, he still has these you know very high execution low economy roots to to work with. And um, 
I like, I like that about Queen. I just would like to see that that older execution that he used to have it was always so impressive to see. And he has been performing a little bit better as of late, so I'm hoping to see a new Queen overall. I was very impressed with that last game versus Mini. He handled everything that Mini was setting out incredibly well. And he hit a really sharp timing with that 4 or 5 lurker push. Uh, that's become a little bit more popular recently and here he has the third base down pretty darn early see if he can defend that with his mutilisk timing this is not a two racks play from rush this time he's going into four racks with plus one Ooh, uh, like yeah a very strong mid game will be coming from rush but can he hold this first wave of mutas getting an scv into the main base right as the mutas are starting no need for any sort of scan here so rush getting a little bit of a win uh, just in the fact that he doesn't have to build any scanners he's really saving himself a lot of money as the turrets are coming up right now Oh, it's a big win. He's basically just going to cut SCVs anyway, but then he's also gaining the minerals that he doesn't need to make the comsats with, didn't have to mine as much gas and what have you. Like Everything is just so much smoother for him as a result. So he can squeeze out the turrets despite still going for a high production style of 4x. It does mean he's got a lot less SCVs overall, but that's kind of how players like Light and what have you like to go for. They, they, they're they much more lighter on their SCVs and um, much more heavier on the amount of units they've got and the, the timings they can hit. And Terran's all about hitting those mid-game timings to abuse a Zerg. That's what makes and breaks great Terran players in this matchup. Pl players compl complain about Dark Swarm, what have you, but a lot of the times is that they're not hitting earlier mid-game timings to kill the Zerg before they even let them get to that Dark Swarm timing, which is the issue. Well, recently, uh, I, I, in general, really do agree with you about the, the timing style for Zerg, but recently there's been an interesting trend coming from light where he goes for three factory and double expansion uh, rather than trying to hit a timing to break the zerg player he's gearing up for super late game with upgrade mech and marines and it seems really strong we'll see if uh, rush has caught on to that yet uh, i think it's something that might be a big factor later on um, in the future in the next season of ASL or something like that but I could be wrong good wow. control here so far from Rush actually picking up Radiant multiple mutilists without taking much damage at all another one goes down wow, wow. I'm getting nerd chills right now. The way he was like moving his marines in and out of line and square formation, like very, very swiftly. Like it's very difficult to do that. He's both like manually manipulating the formation of his marines to make them either safer or to give them more surface area to properly engage with the mutilisks and kill them so quickly. Because if you fail on either of those things, you'll either lose too many marines or you won't do enough damage to the mutants. So I'm really impressed by his bio control. I'm a little bit worried for Queen. He just started his uh, Hydralis Den. But this is for Rax production, and there's going to be so many Marines in just a few moments. With the number of Mutilists that have gone down, I don't know if he can buy enough time for this Lurker transition to, to happen. Uh, had he flown in immediately with the Mutas and seen the four Racks and just dropped the Hydralis Den and started Lurker immediately, he might have had a little bit more leeway in that regard, but right now he's got to do some serious work and he's doing a great job swapping out low hp mutas keeping the stack very high and shaving off marines one by one but this can only take you so far plus one medic marine on four racks is gonna build up super super quick it's gonna be very hard to deal with I, I, I would say so far queen has been successful in keeping this ball manageable it's just now starting to reach a critical point where it's going to be much harder to clean up this bio but there is five medics that have had their energy almost completely drained so this is still much more manageable for queen i need to get a snipe on one of these medics as well so it's, a, it's still a manageable ball for him to, to keep bouncing around in the center of the map and not allow it to come towards his goal in the bottom right which has no sunken 
seconds and uh, like you say the lurker timing's not as crisp as it should be so if he was able to get across the map right now queen would just be straight up dead but he's done a good job of dogging this bioforce constantly and not allowed um rush to come across the map at the cost of a few of these mutants yeah this definitely worthy sacrifices and this is for sure worth it from queen to just pick off a few extra marines some of the engagements weren't the best and the engagements were a little bit rough but there's the lurker eggs coming down now kind of right next to the the hatchery so it might kind of look like uh, eggs of hydras or lings regular eggs popping out but it's actually lurker I don't think that Rush was fooled by that. He's just staying back, playing safe, not taking any damage on his SCVs, waiting for this transi transition to Science Vessel. And now he's going to be able to move out with a lot of strength. Will Queen be ready everywhere? He's got to be stacked with Overlords over top of his Lurkers. This is the part of the game where it's uh, incumbent upon Queen to properly defend, and Rush is going to be the aggressor now. Yeah. Uh, swip it, flipping the script. Yeah, you want about uh, one or two sunkens and three or four lurkers stacked and maybe even an overlord like over the top of those lurkers like we see queen just setting up here and that's that's a pretty much an adequate defense against this massive mid-game push that terran can usually uh, leverage against you here we see the mutilisk doing the role of the overlord and just chilling on top of the lurker stack with three lurkers is that going to be enough looks like rush thinks so we'll back away for now Rush here. Throwing down another expansion. He has two drop ships. Ooh. It could be it. You know, setting up for a drop into the main base or that bottom right hand corner. There's quite a bit of Queen army on that center left, so it might be hard to slip by in that direction. Maybe looking for a different vector here, though. As the, right. I think this will be a four, four dropship. He's waiting in the main. He's, he's actually going to be waiting for four, I think. Yeah, if he if he goes all the way up to four, it's going to be super crazy. But so far, Queen is being super active with these mutalisks. That it's really delaying Rush going for that gambit because he knows he can't just come down on the vertical vector, and he knows that he needs to know exactly where the mutalisks are for those dropships to not just straight up die. Beautiful radiates coming down on there, and the, the the split's pretty good as well, but. But some damage was still done to that muta stack so it's now probably softened up enough that rush is going to feel a lot more confident in just going wherever he so pleases and now we're going to see the dropships move out i'm only seeing two dropships i'm not sure where the other ones yeah. are or if they were made at all going directly so. into four bases is rush and we might truly see what i was talking about earlier which is exactly what light did uh, in not trying to break any bases, just getting the radiates to, to get some damage, maybe go for a little drop here and there, and then switch into a massive tank army. Dropships are going to be caught in the vision. Wow. Barely saw that. I don't, I don't think that he saw it at all. Um, this drop is probably going to get off in the bottom right, but there are Scourge available, so let's see if he can get this uh, into the base. Oh, he's going to catch this. One goes down immediately. Only a single Marine makes it out of that one dropship, so this is going to be much easier to hold. Yeah, there's only one lurker here for the time being, so with a, with a scan and stim, he can still clean this up and be a little bit annoying, but eventually this, this, drop, this drop will probably be a failure. Some oh. things are coming in. Yeah, yeah it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't think he needed to Dark Swarm there, but um, yeah, it's, it's a nice cleanup by Queen, and he's going to go straight up to four gases undeterred. And the 12 o'clock has also been denied by Queen of a counterattack of Ling, so won't be able to see like super fast BCs uh, uh, as as early as he wanted to. And he did want to go for those BCs, like we see there, the physics lab. So it's much harder for him to squeeze out these critical units like the battle cruisers and vessels now without that third gas can be coming online. Ooh, counterattack from these Mutas and Lings, but the Marines are standing strong. Plus two, plus one is online for Rush. Hasn't been able to do any damage, though. Direct damage to Queen. And that fourth base in the bottom right has a lot of hatches coming online right now. We've got a couple of extra hatches down there. 
with that gas rolling, more drones being added on, this ultraless transition is going to be very, very scary. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to make like a massive round of ultras. You'll have like six or eight ultras kind of rolling out all at the same time soon. Looks like we're still going to be having a continuous threat of dropships uh, being leveraged by Rush, seeing if he can come down into this bottom right pocket of the map and break open Queen. But the longer this game goes on, the, the more set up Queen is going to be able to be to respond to these threats. Already the Nidus Canal network there. So if he's got units just waiting on standby to jump in that, he's got some Scourge here waiting on the periphery. And the Radiate does come down to the Scourge actually, denying that snipe on the vessel as well really well timed to not lose that vessel and now the drop's coming in there is a dark swarm down here and some units to kind of walk this away but honestly like with rush is clever with how he positions his units he can still be really annoying down here yeah he can definitely be annoying but the longer the later these drops come in the less annoying they're yeah. really going to be he's not going to get too much damage with that eight kills on that one Firebat, I think most of those were probably Lings, though. And this army is probably not going to do too much in the main base. He will find a little pocket with no Dark Swarm that he can abuse for a moment. But as soon as another Defiler arrives, this uh, hatchery will be safe. And that fourth will be operational once again. Coming in with the Science Vessels, it's a bit of a bold move for Rush to keep these Science Science vessels around because the marine medic army is so small if it suddenly gets surrounded and a bunch of scourge come you can very quickly lose your entire science vessel force he does back away though and gets his science vessels uh, together with the rest of these oh that plague is disgusting with the rest of these uh, marine medic so he's not going to lose them all immediately we just coming in to pick off a couple of those science vessels but that's not the real threat right now. The real threat is all these ultras in the main that have just popped out. This is so many, and he's just waiting on another upgrade and some speed to come yeah. through for these. Yeah, when you when you don't play crazy Zerg like, and you play more standard Zerg like, into ultras like this, you don't want to be too aggressive because your upgrades are actually quite a lot slower than the Terrans. So usually you're just chilling for a bit longer to catch back up into the game. And the Terrans plus three weapons should be finishing up in about 30 seconds or so as well. So even though he's got 4-1 on these ultras, he knows the plus three weapons upgrade for the Terran are going to be coming online in just a moment here as well. Another drop down into the bottom left, but three ultras should be able to handle this. Plus a Defiler as well. There's the Plague. Oof. That uh, Irradiate's going to be helping this Ultra here in a moment. It's coming forward. Oh my goodness. Like four, four Marines just exploded instantly. Upon contact there. Scanning in the natural of the bottom right. Uh, he might go for it here. He might dematrix and spread these marines try to kill the the natural right now there's not a lot for queen at that area and once you get rid of the overlord you can right click down suddenly a bunch of lurkers great plague in the middle of the map getting great value out of these small pockets of lings and a few defilers another drop down here in the bottom right this is getting a little bit tedious from rush because ultras are out they're never going to be enough uh, marines popping out of these drops to actually deal with the number are just a few ultras Ooh, an eraser here in the natural rush is trying to make it as crazy as possible to try and you know snowball in some location maybe break through this natural in the bottom right but so far queen is handling everything really really well I mean, right now, Rush is just trying to build a ladder out of chaos and then wants to ascend it. So far, he's, he's doing a pretty good job of that. Um, I would have liked to see him try and get that razor into the bottom right pocket, the, the, bit, the expansion where all those drones were. And looks like the queen. I mean, it's only be a matter of time before this huge force of Zerg starts to swallow up some of the Terran out on the map. There's only a few more moments where Rush has like some significant threat he can leverage. And right now, queen's being a little bit wasteful with his ultras, only sending them in like two at a time and getting them like gunned down by these uh, uh, pockets of bio units and that's really favorable for rush if he can keep a critical mass of marines alive to keep the the ultra threat at bay for just a few more moments now that he's got this fourth base chugging away at 12 o'clock he's got just barely enough gas that he needs to start getting battle cruisers and that queen knows that that's a big issue though so we, he's going to be doing a lot of counter attacks trying to shut down some of this gas mining at 12 o'clock if he can yeah that 
shut down at 12 is not going to go in Queen's favor. And Rush has enough pockets of Marine Medic all over the place to cut off reinforcements. This is a good trade right here, jumping on top of small groups of Marines. But Rush is heading down south to deal with this fifth gas. He's going to be able to shut down this base. Most likely, a good wall of medics there on the right-hand side. Kind of moves out of the way and allows the Ultras to get on top of the rest of these Marines. So, a little bit of lack of control there from Rush. He will just abandon ship, running home with these medics as the hatchery goes down. I think he's going to be happy with that trade. Yeah, it's just so hard to stay on top of everything as Terra in these positions. Like, playing Bio against Zerg in the late game is one of the most mechanically demanding things there is in StarCraft. And Russia's doing his best of it about almost 400 APM, but still struggling to keep up on all fronts. It's so difficult to control these units in such a, like, crazy chaotic game like this. But I'm, so far, I'm kind of impressed with him, but I do think that Queen's going to start. Oh, it's dropping the bottom left. Actually, gets quite a few drones. These drones are on the way back as well, so he's not paying attention. That's why that could have maybe done something to them if they were on target. Fire, but there's no way Rush is going to be paying enough attention to like do these small micro adjustments at this phase of the game most likely. My attention is on the 12 o'clock right now because the Defiler made its way from the bottom right natural with the Dark Swarm coming down and uh, Ling's Ultras getting underneath. This base is likely to go down. This is the unfortunate part about Rush uh, throwing his entire army into 6 o'clock. He left a lane open for Queen to begin an assault. Towards that 12 o'clock. Right now, Rush is just going to pull the trigger on his own counterattack. Trying to break through into the natural. But a couple of ultras tanking damage for the sunken colonies to wreck through all of this bio. And Rush is completely falling apart. Uh, all of those marines go down. He does have some vessels still. Pretty good chunk of vessels. But his overall marine medic count is so low. Wow, that's a lot of kills from this science vessel the eraser trick uh, dealing more damage than anything else but i just don't think it's going to be enough as queen pushes forward and takes out more of these bases yeah it's kind of insane well, we see all the lurker play over here on the ridge line as well denying some money maybe coming some SEVs. yeah it's really unfortunate i really do advise current players to put like a fire battle two in those bunkers at those proxy expansions just so they've got some protection against dark swarms they can't just get overrun by one defiler and control group of links the range of tricks might come in clutch if the game drags on for much longer but he's gonna have to do a lot more than just kill a few drones if he's gonna um, take queen out of this game completely more drops coming into the main he's been relentless with this drop play but uh, the racers are really what's dealing the big damage one thing i often <laughs> would uh prescribe to these zerg players is getting burrow it can help so much in these late game situations it only costs 100 100 how is it possible that queen doesn't have burrow at this point he's paying the price for it uh, and it is a, an, an incredibly steep bill. He may end up losing the game, in fact. He has to cancel top right just to get a few more minerals out so that he can make a few more drones to get this mining going again. Yeah, for the low, low cost of just half an ultralisk, you can stop, like, dozens of drones dying. Who'd have thought, Sam? That's yeah, an often overlooked upgrade, severely underrated, and it's costing Queen maybe this entire game. Drop coming down into the bottom right-hand corner. There are Scourge available to deal with that. Only one Firebat makes it out, but with two medics, he's basically Rambo. He's just going to be able to hold off all the links in the world in that bottom right. Well, maybe not that many lings. Let's see if they can get this around. Meanwhile, Marine Medic breaking through at the natural. A counterattack coming onto the final mining base of Rush, but a Defiler gets sniped before it can throw down any Dark Swarm or any spell there at that natural. And that might actually be the breaking point. Rush is smashing through. There was no Plague. There was no Dark Swarm to keep these Ultras alive. And look at this. He's losing the very last couple of ultras that he has another uh, racer trick coming down here to deal with these last few drones a few more links pop out but this tiny little special forces uh group of army is clearing out everything queen has one more mining base over there in the center right 
And with a few more ultras popping out, he might just barely be able to hold on, but this is so, so close. Yeah, this is wild. I mean, I, I think Rush has just barely done it, but by the skin of his teeth has he done this. Like, this is kind of wild. The Queen can still actually uh, mount a comeback, which is very tricky. Oh, the, the catches on these battles are actually critical right now. If he kills, yeah, this is really, okay, it's a huge play from Queen. That's the only thing that maybe gives him a, a decent-ish win chance in this game, but it's still gonna be a rough time for him. There's also a few more Scourge out that can deal with the remaining vessel or two as well. And he's got such little mining right now. Um, he won't just like straight up die maybe, but I think Rush has still done it. Rush has done just barely enough critical damage that maybe Queen can't stabilize here. I don't, it's hard to say. Well, Queen just killed every drone at the center right, or sorry, Rush has killed every drone of Queens at the center right with just one eraser trick. And now the Nidus is gonna fall. The bottom right hand corner has basically all the drones in this game. We've only got 38 supply, so this is this yeah, is like 10 supply of drones uh, that's just about yep. to fall. Uh, center right going to be harassed by a fire bat. It looked like we might be able to stabilize, but now that Rush comes across the map for this counter attack, we can see Queen is out of this one. GG is called as he taps out. Rush takes an incredibly high octane game there. And he gets a clapper. Okay, final Protoss player of the night, Bisu, spawning here in the bottom right hand corner. Rush. Hot off that last victory. Man, was he looking good in that game. Yeah, he's hot off the press right now, and it's a good read as well. If you want to go and study up on how to like beat Zergs, like this is a good guy to watch. He, he most most times you'll see players just kind of like wait for something to happen and then try and exploit it. You have to think a higher level than that to be really successful in Terran versus Zerg. You have to create the points of weakness, lay siege to the Zerg for extended time, and over a minute or two minutes of laying siege to the Zerg and creating this chaos and opportunity. Eventually, the opportunity does present itself, and you can exploit it. Personally, I thought Rush was in a very bad position after losing the 12 o'clock. Once the Zerg player gets on the map and uh, with Ultras is pressuring the Terran, it, it's common for a Terran player to just crumble and fall apart, but you can see that Rush is a higher caliber able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe even against those you know, crushing, overwhelming numbers of Ultras. He's constantly harassing and going mad with the v uh, vessel play but i mean how crazy is it that one upgrade cost queen that game basically it's um kind of wild to see in 2024 yeah, I mean, I really do want to see Queen perform better, so I'm not going to, like, badmouth him too much, but um, he's been performing slightly more okay, so I'm going to give him a few more weeks to kind of, like, you know, show that he's uh, a different different kind of sharpness. But so far, I'm not yet convinced by him. It looked like uh, Beast 2 was considering cancelling the guess and then maybe remaking it to then cancel it again to try and optimize, but then he didn't do that. Um, I think, um, I think actually it makes sense because if, if you're threatening that, it might tempt the Terran player to like rush over to the gas with an SCV to build the gas if he does cancel, and that would like delay mining time. So maybe he's like just trying to get value out of the scout, even though you know, while well, it's doing nothing. It's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, well, here I think it's fine to just let the, the gas be and delay that as much as possible from rush rush is gonna have to do some sort of gasless fast expand play um even if he kills the gas immediately here and starts it he will have to get that nexus before making a factory there's no real way around it scv is gonna be pulled to the ramp i think he's killing the gas with like one scv which could be problematic because Bisu is here with the probe ready to dive in and just suddenly uh, throw down another assimilator if Rush is not careful. Rush does bring another Marine around, but he's coming in with that probe. Can he actually get it? 30 HP, 22, 19, 11, 8. Okay, looks like the, pro the probe is far enough away. He won't be able to reseal that. 
And he catches the probe as well. Nice job from Mirage. He's holding on both fronts. Yeah. And we'll be able to get that gas. I mean, that little mini game was forcing attention away from Rush, and a Marine wasn't able to come to the front to help against those Zealots. So it did give Bisu a chance at exploitation and wasn't successful. So really nice from Rush to be able to hold his own under that kind of early game pressure from Bisu. And both those Zealots are really softened up as well. So, yeah, so far everything going his way. Bisu trying to be uh, fancy and catch this SCV and deny it scouting. But so far, Rush has been able to juke and jive around enough to not lose the SCV. So he's getting a pretty good scout off in the main base very hard to do to keep this scv alive there it goes it falls zealots there doing a good job cleaning that up but rush handling everything really well so far first factories on the way will he go for a starport or a two factory follow-up is what we're going to be looking for next this is the point in the game where bisu won't have an observer in your base so you can pull out some funny tricks yeah i mean bisu's um putting on pressure with these zealots uh he's actually sent one zealot back home which is extremely interesting to me and just running with his full hp zealots only up here to maybe be annoying I'm very curious about this this choice and i know he knows that the vultures aren't going to be out yet but i'm not sure if he's going to actually attempt to run by here or is he just trying to be annoying to rush was he just confirming the cc there i thought he saw that before i thought he saw that before as well i'm a little bit confused about that i'm not 100 percent sure but Ooh, interesting. look at this wow going straight up to three factories yeah he might be going all the way up into four factories early and putting on some pressure here it's possible but um what are the what's the probability that he goes three factory into a third base is that even possible in this uh, meta that's why i don't think it's likely that he's doing that i feel like it's more likely to be a timing attack with additional factories and machine shops added on right it's uh quite early for this third factory but he's not mining a lot of gas right now in the natural he's just kind of being reserved with that maybe this is going to be a lot of vultures i'm not quite sure what to make of this and i think he's adding on more ITVs to mine it now okay bisu is not really able to scout yet so maybe this can catch him off uh, by surprise uh, in in a couple of minutes i'm very curious very he definitely, he definitely assumes there's going to be like some kind of like you know two factory armory play or something you know i mean he's, he's no way he's assuming like straight into three factory no. i doubt it that, yeah definitely not he starts a third at 620. this might actually work out pretty well for rush then if, if he's going to start a nexus that quick he has hardly any gateway units and he's only got two gates so the the potential out of this play is, is pretty high just based on what bisu is doing maybe if this was a slower expansion with more gateways and a quicker reaver then maybe this wouldn't have worked well but it, there's a good possibility here and with this vulture running by okay one dragoon coming to the ramp at the perfect time is going to shut this down maybe one kill on that but he's pulled back bisu very far away from this front and it's allowing him to go to the right hand side completely uncontested right now so he's gonna I mean, be able to a, yeah go ahead i would say there is a probe hanging out at the three o'clock location so like he's gonna see it sometime early enough to defend which is actually a, a bit of a saving grace here if this probe wasn't here to check for this this is gonna be a nightmare situation but instead he's catching some of these probes from the transfer as well he's already getting some value on these units being a little bit out, uh, out position without even having to attack yet uh, I think he's a little bit cautious to attack because the probe saw him, so he's going to wait till all his forces are together and then go, which makes a lot of sense. This is a lot from Rush. This is a scary, scary army, and coming down from that high ground, it's not going to be easy to get a good engage as the Protoss is coming forward now with quite a few zealots trying to drag the mines, but this is just more and more tank damage going down on these dragoons great micro not taking any big mine shots on these dragoons another run by towards the natural immediately blocked by bisu this is perfect control from him yeah 
I mean, so far he's mitigated a lot of disaster. A few of the probes have been sniped on the transition and what have you, but overall there's no disastrous damage that's been sustained from him for the time being. And he's also still warding away any future potential threats. Though these tanks are trying to be really sneaky and come down here into probe sniping range before the Dragoons can get back over here. But he might also lose these Dragoons for this effort. I think he's going to lose the tanks for sure now. He has a pretty good spread of these dragoons, and with just four remaining, it's enough. He's going to lose yeah. one of these, so he can't two shot anymore. But the tanks going down is huge. Losing these dragoons means nothing. He's got three Nexi pumping away. There's a late armory for Rush, and no third base just yet, so. Wow, even a Stargate here for, for Bisu as well. Yeah, going into yeah. Cares after this, and it's a great decision from Bisu after killing off that many tanks early on. Yeah, no, it's a very wise choice, and he knows it's not wow. a great turn well, right? He knows how how late the um, armories are, so he knows that carriers have even more potency on this rebase timing. Um, the, the Observer sees everything as well, so he is making a lot of factories. He's going all the way up to seven factories, about, around about the 10-minute mark, which is, is a pretty sizable uh, amount of factories. Usually you're doing that on three bases going into four, so it is pretty crazy to go on that on two bases, but he will need those Goliaths and... Uh, um, that production fighting against what Bisu is doing. So having this many factories might give him some chance against this carrier transition. I, I thought Bisu might cancel the carriers actually after seeing uh, the seven factory play. He started three Stargates. Yeah. That three seems wild to me. Uh, this is definitely an all in seven fact uh, from Rush. It's not going to be nearly as strong as a normal seven factory because we already lost three tanks and so many vultures it's gonna be a bit nerfed but he's gonna push out with a lot of tanks a lot of ground forces and bisu's not gonna have much more than a few dragoons to deal with this initially until those carriers come out his speed on zealots is gonna be very slow he's only gonna have maybe one shuttle can he actually deal with this attack that's coming out right now from rush it's I'm being delayed by the bridges a bit. He's going to try and, get, and engage right as the Terran's coming across the bridge. It's a very nice uh, thought, but Rush is being cautious. He's not coming all the way across here without sieging up first. He's slowly pushing forward here. Bisu buying a lot of time, but not dealing any damage to this army of Rush, and it's swelling, growing very quickly right now. Yeah, he needs to just keep forcing as many sieges as possible. It's going to be a little bit of time before these carriers become online and relevant, and the supplies are going to be very deceptive, because 18 of that supply is just not even going to be in use for some time. So the supplies are a lot closer than they look, and this is why is going to really struggle in, in slowing down this force. He's trying to split off some goons to the western flank to maybe kind of be annoying and come in from another angle and try and slow down this army more indirectly rather than trying to halt it at the front. How's it going around the Zelts coming in? But not a lot of vultures to soak those up. It doesn't really matter with this positioning on the ramps here, with the bridges here, and the Zelts not having speed. This is going to be dealt with really nicely by Rush, and there's actually not a lot of Dragoons to fight against these tanks either. And with the huge siege line of tanks just chilling on the bridges, there's no way Beastu can engage this. He's just in pure desperation. But these proxy Dragoons, though, are going to be picking off um, some of these uh, rallied tanks and stopping the force from growing, but the force is already large enough to threaten Bisu here. He's just on the clock right now. Carrier's only just now starting to pop out of those Stargates, but three are not going to be enough to overwhelm this force anytime soon. And it's going to take them a little bit of time for the build up their interceptors. We could just build turrets here as well for Rush. It's turret time. He's going to start laying those down all in the natural of Bisu. Shutting him out of breaking through with these carriers. There's three on the field zealot speed is done but it's too late the zealots already spent their lives earlier on in the fight he's gonna start to push things back a little bit there's not quite enough goliaths he hasn't been able to reinforce this position for quite some time so the dragoons really did a great job slowing down the reinforcement train of rush and buying that time now though the army over in the natural is large enough to actually push out on its own and take the fight with the, the goons so he will reinforce this position soon bisu has only moments to break out before uh, that reinforcing army comes over here and seals the deal crushes yeah. bisu out of this game 
I mean, it's already going to be pretty um, fake ceiling that these tanks are going to be hitting this expansion on the right-hand side. If he loses too much mining here, it's going to be devastating because Rush inversely is getting his own third base online right now and producing seven Goliaths at a time. He will eventually overwhelm this carrier force since there's not currently a bunch of He's just going to tap out saying, GG, all the Protoss players are now dead. And it's going to be, unfortunately, um, just the Terran versus Zerg from now on. Bold moves from Bisu in that last game. It doesn't pay off, though. The triple Stargate carrier. And now Protoss is extinct. All TVZ for the rest of this series. And I'm not too sad about it. Are you, Shun? Me, personally, I'm really happy about it. I mean, there'll be some people in the chat not so happy about it in the comments, maybe. If you're, you know, big Protoss fans and BC fanboys and what have you. What, what can I tell you? You know, your boys are not performing. You know, they need to get better. I don't think it's a map issue as well, guys. I'm just saying. It's definitely not a lineup issue either. This is the great, the best of the best for the Protoss squad, and they're not yeah. able to perform today. Um, sign of the times, perhaps? Well, we'll find out in future weeks of the KCM Rush now versus Hero. Uh, we are in horizontal spawns on Radeon, which does put a bit of a twist on the matchup. Yeah. I mean, it, it does give you a little bit of pressure on the Terran player here. I mean, they will be scouted early on by the Overlords and also a direct path to the natural expansion makes Muta Harass much more potent. So maybe you want to invest in a little bit more turrets, uh, slightly faster timing and what have you. But it does also mean that you know where you need to concentrate your turrets because it's much less likely for them to come into your main base early game. So, you know, you can go heavier on your turrets and your natural and a little bit lighter on your main and just cover your production uh, zone instead and kind of in max that way. But yeah, it does allow like a bit of a, a bit of weirdness to occur in this matchup. Yeah, the overlord can also scout the natural without being revealed and the marine attack very, very fast, like the two racks timing. Coming towards your natural is a little bit scary quick in these positions. Uh, you can get broken if you don't have creep colonies already down and ready to, to begin into sunken colonies uh, when the move out occurs. So we'll see if any of these factors come into play. Hero gets his 12 hatch down. He sees the uh, strategy here. Not going to be 8 racks. Not going to be uh, CC first, uh, which would counter his build. It's pretty much even with the Rax uh, expansion out of Rush and these two players will be able to uh, test out their their latest styles their their best builds here in this matchup yeah I'm curious to see what um, Hero is going to bring to the table he's got such a diverse range of play that you never know quite what you're going to get when you do watch him play which is one of the reasons why he's one of my favorite players it does seem like he's playing like a super straight up two hatch style I don't think he's playing anything too macro centric at the moment which he, his usually wheelhouse is to play more macro heavy but he he's capable of doing like anything that's low economy as well so I, I can imagine it's very scary to go up against a Zerg like that where you really don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, the, it's a signature of a great player's the ability to adapt to any style. He's uh, got a great overlord position over this little space area just outside the natural. He's watching Rush's Marines very closely, seeing if a naked Marine move out is, is going to be coming. Uh, Rush trying to obfuscate that just by having the Marines out a little bit in front of the wall in a place where he thinks that he's not being scouted, but uh, I don't think that Hero's getting fooled by this too much. He's trying, hoping to force a few extra links. Look at that. He's moving in the vision of the Overlord. And we should see a response here from Hero. Uh, although this might be a mind game, he might call the bluff. Uh, in a moment he sees no lings popping but those eggs could be popping lings just now five marines yeah. making their way into the front and they are committed hero's trying to um, bluff um, rush as well by showing him only two lings oh. and then coming in with more and going in for the drone surround as well really clutch play from hero look at this absolute handsome 
fancy nerd saying like can you believe it like the way he baited the marines in as well he acted like he didn't know he was in trouble and then like shows him the toolings runs back and then baits the marines to commit to the attack and then go commits to the drone surround before he, he knows it's time as well yeah it felt like he was baiting there with those two links like he definitely knew that they were coming that the marines were coming but he made it appear that he didn't right. um it also looked like he kind of botched the movement on the links like the two links that popped in the natural didn't join the fight initially but he was just focused on getting the uh, drones into a good surrounding position uh, less focused on the links there and it ends up working out perfectly for him so hero in a great spot now going into this to hatch me to play he's built the bare minimum number of links and he hasn't lost any drones so uh, after killing a few marines he's gonna be able to put on a lot of pressure to rush oh absolutely and being able to set up this third third base at the bottom right natural expansion like it's so far away from rush to attack it's such a long rush distance the longest rush distance we've got in starcraft radio and cross map and gonna be coming to me with these mules and stalling out the turrets before they can be finished as well and getting a few um scv snipes before having a real high number of mutas he's doing a lot with a little right now is hero and um that's really annoying for rush because like i was saying earlier he's committed a lot more to the natural turrets rather than the production area in the main base and the, because the timing was off by a few seconds has given a nice little window here for hero to exploit and now he's got enough to come into the natural and start one-shotting the scvs he's already killed about four or five scvs is gonna come in and get this turret now opening up the position to really abuse the mineral line here for rush rush struggling with what to do at this point he's gonna send marines out on the map while links run into the natural and start to kill these turrets uh, rush is gonna go across and try to force the mutilus back so far it's successful hero does back away respecting the uh, marine attack that could come into his natural with no sunk colony there he needs these mutas on that defense and the lings in the natural get cleared out after killing just one turret a pretty decent response here from rush but i really feel like hero has the momentum yeah no, that's it that's what i'm sure saying i mean here is the kind of guy where if you you, you know you, you you try and give him a dollar he'll take your identity and take your entire bank account you know you, you can't give him anything here just look how easily he's able to mop up these bio units as well it's really exceptional to 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 watch him play like he's I, I think he might be the contender to win the next asl if we don't see flash in full dominant fashion now he was a contender in the last season had a few uh, pitfalls but maybe if he cleans up his zvz uh, and you know gets it as strong looking as his zvt you can see him take this next season of asl Hero will lose Amida here in the rally. It looks like no, he pulls back. Has a good number of damaged Amidas kind of sitting over there at that position. And he's gathered together a, a pretty scary force of Ling Mida to potentially run this bio ball over. Rush being very careful and continuously uh, reinforcing this position. He's getting, he, uh, he looks ready to run back into the natural, if I'm being honest. He looks like he's. A uh, second away from, you know, if Hero pulls the trigger, he's just going to run for it. Um, but yeah, here comes those army. Yeah, he is just going to run for it. He's going to try and get into a better position where the turrets are going to be able to help out. But even with the turrets uh, to assist and the uh, advantage of the sim city here in the natural he still loses almost everything it's so funny like he, he wants the the bio to come out onto the map for the the ling you know, clean up like Soggy does but he's doing so well with the mirrors that he has to force the issue instead he's just gonna be dive bombing on top of these for small pockets marines if he gets on top of the production area here say and the game's just going to be over gg rush taps out jyj is the last remaining terran hope and he's got to take out hero and then jaydong waiting in the wings saying it's gonna get crazy up in it. wow hero looking fantastic in that last game but it really comes back to the donation he gave to or that rush gave to hero uh, of those early marines and like you said with giving hero a dollar he'll just take it all he'll take your entire life and he rips away rush's chances here he rips away another uh, Terran player bringing his team one step closer 
to an ultimate victory. And now JYJ likely intimidated after watching his fellow Terran player get eviscerated. How will he perform on Retro? Hero spawning in the top left, JYJ in the bottom left. Let's go into this potential last game. Definitely going to be a little bit of uh, jitters in the JYJ's home booth. And, ooh, early pull as well from Hero. He anticipates the 8 racks. He's not going to go for a 12 patch. He's not foolish. He knows what's likely going to be coming out of JYJ to kind of get a little uh, cheap early game advantage against the likes of Hero. He probably doesn't feel too comfortable playing a straight up game against Hero right now, especially after the, the wind is going to be blowing at Hero's sails at like full full mast right now saying just like chugging along at like over 9,000 knots on this uh, beautiful ocean cosmic scale that is Starcraft. This map retro in close spawns the opposite of that previous map with the uh, Radeon uh, being one of the longest rush distance in the game of Starcraft one of the longest map rush distances that we have this is a very short rush distance so a great decision by hero to go for the earlier pool and the moment that jyj sees the timing of this hatchery though i think prudent decision by him to just back off uh, get this wall finished and get his cc on the way and he's really not going to fall too far behind because of this it's a great way to open because you don't need to pull the trigger on this aggression it slows you down a little bit but with the wall behind this and the CC coming up, he's going to be feeling pretty good. He has a great way of cutting your losses. Like, he was feeling good. He went to the casino. He started throwing chips down. Realized his luck wasn't quite swinging. And was like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to call it a day before this gets super crazy. Yeah. He's going to fall back into a pretty reasonable macro play from here. JYJ doesn't have any surprises for us just yet. Uh, throwing Ooh. down a second. Oh, nice. Gets that SCV. But throws down a second uh, barracks back at home. He's going to go for just a standard two racks follow up. And it can be strong against a player who opened early pool. You really can't afford too many sunken colonies when you're going this quick for tech. Oh, that's for, that's for damn sure saying. Yeah, I mean, the usual thing you'll do is you'll make two sunkens if you know it's like a very strong like two racks timing. You're kind of forced to make those two sunkens. If you can, you want to avoid making those at any cost. And sometimes you'll squeeze out a few speedlings early on to try and like force backstabs and do anything possible to prevent the need to make those sunkens if you can help it. Sometimes you'll even see some weird hybrid variations where you only make one sunken and like 10 speedlings and try and do some like, you know, catch rounds on the, the Marines right when you need to and what have you. Sometimes you can calculate that out as well. But uh, if you can help it, I would say not making any sunken is always the most optimal play, right? So, so he's going to try and force him to do that, right? JYJ, yeah. he knows that you don't want to make sunkens, especially like if you're going for a 2.5 hatch, Making two sunkins not gonna throw off your build too much. It's it's annoying, but it's it's gonna slow you down in a hardly noticeable way. But uh, when you're going for an early pool and you're this drone light, trying to get into a very quick mutilus timing, that you feel it. You definitely feel it. The addition of those two extra sunkins. And this is the plan. Plan. This is the goal. JYJ is getting ready for this move out. He's just about to pop two medics. Then start to move across the map. A, 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 a hatchery in the top right hand corner starts for Hero. Uh, is he going to get forced into these sunken colonies? I think it's likely. We should just see the, the wall close behind JYJ. And these speedlings, which are threatening the counterattack, are not that threatening right now to our Terran player. Yeah. I mean, the main issue for Zerg is that they want to make this third hatchery. And so you're so tight on making your mutilisk spot because you're making this third hatchery. So if you also have to make two sunkens, it just really makes your optimization so poor when you are squeezing out these mutas. But so far, he's been able to do that on just a single sunken. So that's actually optimized his minerals a lot more than would usually be the case. So he actually might just barely have enough mutas to get over here and and stop these this hatchery from dying. The hatchery might get really low here 
on the right, it might survive with like 200 hit points, but Hero might just barely be able to save it. Rush has pulled the trigger on several stims to get over here as quickly as possible. Uh, Hero's not going that direction. He's heading for the opponent's base. He cancels, and he's just going to put on massive pressure. Are there turrets in time? It seems like Rush has slowed down his turret timing a little bit to try and get that uh, army into the top right as quickly as possible, but the turret barely finishes at the last moment here. JYJ going to retreat up into his main base. He is looking very solid. Right. Yeah, I'm really impressed with JYJ because he didn't skimp out on his turret timing. Like, if he if he was, like, cutting corners there and just uh, hoping that Hero would try and save the hatchery and wasn't making his turrets on time mm. back at home, he could just straight up die. So the fact that he's really respecting all possible outcomes is really impressive because he's not cutting any corners to make this work, and I'm really impressed by that. Great engagement from JYJ, but he loses his medic. Did he go after the hatchery? It gets laid down right in front of his eyes. Not much he can do about it, though, with this number of mutas fighting. And all the medics are gone. The naked marine falls. And Hero will get this hatchery online, if a bit later than he hoped. Yeah, I mean, it was a very, it was a very tidy cleanup, I have to say, from Hero. There, did lost like the absolute bare minimal to kill that bow force and get the hatchery on the way. But the slowdown has, you know, done its job, like we were just saying. So, yeah, so far this has kind of reset the game state a lot. Like early game, it looked like you know, Hero, um, Hero was in a slight edge because of the, you know, the the eight racks falling flat on its face but the reality is the game stay is actually much more jyj favored than originally so yeah hopefully jyj can navigate this into a win maybe but i, I still think that hero is very much in this game that's for sure absolutely he's still in this and he's gonna be sharking around looking for opportunities into this main he hasn't seen the timing of the factory just yet He's got his transition going at Hydralis Den, making Lurker upgrades as we speak. He has to buy some time, but an armory. Wait a second, armory here from JYJ. Is he actually going to go into a Valkyrie tank push to follow this up? That's, that's an interesting decision, considering we've just got the scan on the natural and seen the transition on the way. Well, he might be banking on Hero relying too much on his muters and not having the, a crisp enough lurker timing. And he's doing a pretty good job of turning around on these muters uh, so thus far. Beautiful spread of the Marines each time, getting the catch on these muters, being very uh, mindful of the exact positioning of these Marines and reacting very um, adeptly to the muterless positioning uh, of Hero um, inversely. So, I'm, so far, I've been really impressed by JYJ this game, honestly. Like, uh, unless he falls apart in a few moments here, I would say he's. He's played a very strong game. He's going to get the reinforcement to this Marine Medic group in the middle of the map. It's just become very scary with plus one finishing up. Needless are falling. The group is getting smaller. There's no lurkers just yet. Tanks are being incremented out here. It's looking like a fantasy push. How is the defiler timing from Hero? He's got the evolution chamber done. So the upgrades will be started, but it's really important that he gets that hive on time before these tanks start to come across the map and actually siege up either of these two areas. Where will he go? The natural or the third? What do you think, Shun? Uh, I think he should just roll up to the natural, but he might not want to go for that because it's too obvious of a choice. He might want to go across the middle of the map to kind of hide from the overlord scouting and what have you. So he might decide to attack the third just because it makes sense in terms of like hiding the push for as long as possible. Ooh, this is scary. Valkyrie is out, but it's the first Valkyrie. And as soon as it starts to shoot, it cannot move. It takes two volleys from those mutas and almost dies without dealing any damage to the middle stack whatsoever so this is a bit scary right now for jyj if he loses this push he's gonna be in a pretty serious deficit uh, valkyrie super super low and the tanks are shoving forward the mutas are not in position to cut off reinforcements so these tanks are gonna be able to siege up and more 
Uh, we'll be following behind this. Another Valkyrie should be uh, joining me through here in a moment, too. There it is. Two shots from that. Third shot goes down. The Mutas take a pretty big volley from that Valkyrie, but he's just going to pull the trigger going right in towards the natural. JYJ going for broke right now. He's just going to dive in, try to kill the Nidus Canal. Can he actually get it? Oh! He does get the lurker. He kills the Nidus and the Valkyrie goes down. The Scourge kind of thrown away there and the muted number is way too low. Great scan to finish this off. GG hero taps out. What an amazing and well-timed push from JYJ. That was scary. Very well done uh, with the, the, the fantasy style. You don't honestly see that from him very often, but... He pulled it out brilliantly there in that game. All right, hero is gone. I can get rid of this score line. It's JYJ versus Jadong for this final match. And we're back on Radeon. Not horizontal spawns this time, so it does change things a bit. Yeah, the rush distance is a little bit longer. And uh, doesn't we don't have direct paths into the natural expansion like before, so might see a little bit of a heavier turret commitment in the main base for JYJ this time around, and the production area slightly more prioritized as well. One thing about this map uh, as a consideration for Zerg is that you can move your first overlord across the map, and then you have scouting information in both bottom right. left and bottom right natural but if you don't move an overlord your first overlord directly across the map then uh, you don't have a safe path anymore and if you try to send one you could end up losing it so jadong opening pool first i guess it's fine here because if he goes for the pool he's gonna have lings to defend the overlord so checking top right might be a better decision here that way uh, he will, you know, provide safe passage for that overlord down to the bottom right. And if there was, you know, Terran in the top right, he would have the, the information right away. So he could send the lings directly to that area. A little bit of uh, weird issues with Jadong's drones here and their mining optimization. And had to glitch out the, the drone from over the minerals before he got it out to make the hatchery and drone scale. Bit of a weird situation there. But nonetheless, going to be seeing a pretty standard play from both players, it seems. No crazy barracks timing or early pool. Um, that's going to be like, you know, a game ending by any means. So this is just a, a nice little safe play here from Jadong. I've been liking Jadong's play lately, especially in this matchup. He's been showing some excellent understanding and great gameplay. Oh, he gets that first SCV. You can tell that JYJ was not expecting an early pool here at all. Yeah, it might, it might give a nice ledge here to Jadong, and with the drone still alive in the main base, this makes it a little bit annoying, so he wants to catch this drone in the main base, meanwhile the marines aren't in the wall in the natural to help deal with the lynx, and now a very weird situation, because he's going to have to evacuate the wall, retreat to the ramp, and this gives Jadong a little bit of a window to be annoying here. Yeah, he can start to hit this supply depot, and as soon as the marines come down the ramp, he could try to dive on that. He's waiting for the one Marine to pop. He jumps on it immediately. Great surround there for Jadong. He's not making any more links behind this. He's actually double hatchery in the main base before pool, or before gas. So he is going to go into a big... Oh, diving right on top of this. He's going to get both the Marines for sure. Another Marine pops out though at the end. And pretty good blocking here from the SCV. So only one Ling will survive. Pretty well held by JYJ. Behind this though, a big macro play coming from Jadong. Yeah, going straight up into three hatcheries. So turning into like a 2.5 hatchery play after this initial ling investment. And he's reset the marine count so much that as long as he doesn't just like lose drones to like two marines running across the, the map, he's, he's looking really fine right now. Yeah, this is maybe more reminiscent of like a three hatch play, uh, old school yeah. three hatch than even a 2.5 more modern style. But yeah, you're um, right. with that early, early ling aggression, uh, paying off by killing quite a few marines i think he is in a pretty decent spot he looks to be a little supply blocked right now but there's the overlord and with this additional hatchery so early on he's going to be able to pump out a crazy number of 
drones, whereas JYJ is just going to be sitting here on curve, trying to get that command center down. Um, what kind of pressure can he put onto Jadong besides just a naked marine move out, which is quite risky without any scouting information? I don't think he's going to be able to do much. He won't. He won't do that. He's going to have to play very passive for at least another minute here. Um, he might, maybe, he might attempt like a naked eight, six, seven, eight marine move out, but I, I don't think it's very wise from him to go for that. Jadong's lined up very nicely for free hatchery Ling, so very risky play to go for that right now. He has a lot more lava at his disposal than usual, usual, so the higher Ling count is much more likely, as he might also want to avoid having to make sunkens at this point. So yeah, very, very unwise to try and move out from him, so... Unfortunately, it looks like Jadon's going to get away with murder and just make loads of drones, hardly any Zerglings and no Sunkens, and going to have a very strong mid-game here. Yeah. Everything looking on curve for Jadon as he propels himself forward. The drones here going to be leading the charge. The fuel in his engine to make this massive late game a macro powerhouse um that's the thing that's been impressing me the most with jadong if he manages to get through the early game without taking too much damage his macro right now is insane he's able to pump out such a plethora of units in all matchups it's it's quite crazy to witness that is very reminiscent of how he was so dominant in Zerg versus Zerg. It wasn't just that he had a high win rate in Zerg versus Zerg. It's that whenever he got any kind of advantage, he would always win. And that was the thing. He would find ways of getting a tiny little advantage, and then he would always win those games. And that was why he had such an impressive record in Zerg versus Zerg. So it is very much like his style of mindset. He wants to secure some kind of advantage and then capitalize on that for the remainder of the game. So JYJ has optimized here pretty well. He's realized what's gone on with Jadong. He's seen the third hatch before gas. He knows pretty much what's coming. Wow, a very fast Hydro Sten. Look at that. He knows that this is going to be like seven minutes timing for the, the meters to come across the map. So he hasn't built any early turrets or anything. He's just adding them on after building into a pretty sizable... Uh, barracks count with four racks. He's going to have a lot of Marines ready to fight. Um, on the other side, Jadon going to have plenty of forces here with that very fast hatchery. He's got so much larva to work with. This is going to be a battle of pr two pretty big uh, contestants. These, these guys both have a lot behind them. Whoa, that Marine dancing back and forth. Pretty crazy. I'm, I'm curious about this Hydra's Den, though. It's, it's so early. It's even before the Mutalus popped, right? Well, it's about 30 seconds earlier than what you would probably have expected from the timings that we saw Jadon go for. So that will probably eliminate any window that JYJ had of exploiting Jadon. And I guess it also means that because Jadon's third base was so late, it gives him plenty of time to slow walk these Hydras all the way over to the top right as well, which is right. an important factor to note. Because if these Marines were able to come onto the map and these Hydras weren't able to get across the map, it'd be a, a pretty much game ending scenario for Jadon. Right, he would have to rely really heavily on these mutas to try and slow everything down. And now he doesn't have to rely on anything except for uh, buying just a tiny bit of time to get these lurkers online. And I think he's going to be completely safe here, honestly. Yeah. We have Hive on the way, so still quite a long time before Nidus can come online. Uh, up here in the top right hand corner, but he's got time. He's got plenty of links out here to... Look for counterattacks, backstabs, catching, you know, reinforcements. He's got the mutas uh, that he made originally. He hasn't really built any more. He's been saving a lot of his gas for lurkers and uh, his follow-up with all of the upgrades coming online. Now going to dive into the natural here before the mutalists become completely obsolete. Going to try and get whatever damage he can uh, before we have splash damage and maybe get a good scout of the main as well to see what's going on and what the timings are on everything. A tank! from JYD. Two tanks! What is he yeah. going to do with these? 
Well, not a lot. They might just die saying if he's not careful. Oh, Jadon doesn't actually get the pick off and pays the price for trying to commit to that as well. But yeah, this push isn't going to be too successful. The only thing it can really do is slow down a fourth base that Jadon's not really keen on getting anyway right now. So a little bit unfortunate. With this, these tanks are basically pinned down for the time being until he can build up a big enough fireball back at home. And Jadon knows that he's just going to keep on top of these Marines, force them to run away with their tail tucked between their legs and hide in that bunker until more can be mounted here to actually get out. But Jadong also knows that now he's got time to come and be annoying and set up a nice little hole position lock attack to here, maybe. Yeah, Jadong is so famous for this right now. He does this almost every game. Tries to get aggressive with this lurker. Sometimes it pays off. Sometimes it backfires dramatically, but this time it's going to pay off. Huge, huge hits on those lurkers and Jadong. He manages to make it work. He's going to dive on top of the tanks right now, getting, uh, I think, a kill at least. Not going to get two, but these retreating lurkers probably going to run back home now. It's uh, a little bit risky now to keep sending lurkers out on the map because we need something back at home in the natural to keep ourselves alive until that uh, defiler comes out. Still quite a bit of time before that's ready. Yeah. Yeah, it's still going to be another like minute, minute and a half until the Defiler is consuming and laying down Dark Swarms. There's a pretty sizable window of attack for JYJ to try and exploit here. And he is getting caught out on the map with some of these Lurker Ling forces as well. So exactly what uh, JYJ needs to mount a comeback in this game and maybe find a, a winning condition here because there's not a lot in the top right. And I don't think the Nidus Canal has actually been uh, fully set up yet. So there is a moment of weakness here for Jadon. Oh, there's the Nidus Canal. The Nidus Canal is there i'm not sure if it's connected yet okay it is we've got extra lurkers coming in only one tank to try and shove this back with one vessel to deal damage this should be enough lurkers especially with more stuff coming online guardians behind this okay that's interesting because the, the, the forces will be pinned down here so by the time the guardians morph they can just like sandwich the army from both sides and force a full-on retreat and yeah he can use these guardians defensively until consumers ready well this is gonna be quite the surprise for jyj he's looking for the ability to push through right now and he's just gonna get flanked by guardians um, Oh, and JY, or Jadong is going to bring up a, a, another force here with wow. some more uh, defilers and lurkers to hit this from the south as well, along with the guardians. Here comes to Scourge. They're going to kill. Wait, okay. Nice snipe there. Keeping that vessel alive at least, but the entire force gets completely surrounded and annihilated. More Scourge come out just to catch this. Very well played here by Jadong. <laughs> incredibly wow. well played that, that was like watching like a competitive eater like devour like a massive 5,000 calorie plate of food realize that like some of it dripped onto the floor and like reaching down and like snatching <laughs> off every last little scrap and then scoffing it down that was crazy <laughs> that was like um a ballet dancer or a ballet dancer duo of flipping each other in the air and just catching on one, you know, one foot on one hand uh, in a handstand, you know what I mean? It's it's incredible the, the amount of finesse that it takes to make something like that happen. Really, really impressed with Jadong's play thus far. The Guardians are a, a very interesting flair, but the real success of that fight was coming in from both angles and crushing that army up in the top right hand corner can't be understated how difficult it is to pull off all of this while all the craziness is going on with jyj trying to break into that position things have gone very well thus far but there's a bit of time now for jyj to potentially break this man open and it is tough to get down onto this low ground and take this base with uh you know radiates that are going to be hammered out yeah, I mean, it's always nice when you see Zergs find a way of utilizing Guardians, especially defensively. And it did make sense given the current game state and map geometry. So I was really happy to see Jadon find a use of those units. And um, maybe Artosis is onto something when he says about StarCraft game. Um, sorry, the Evo would, would enjoy StarCraft, like with the fighting community. Because, I mean, if you think of StarCraft, I guess you could break it down into like combo elements when like both players are using like strategic combos to try and overwhelm one another. And I guess there's some kind 
kind of correlation to fighting games there, but in a much more tactical sense. Truly similar to a fighting game. I definitely agree with you there. Um, that combo from J Dong earlier was incredible, but it's not a knockout combo. It's not a knockout blow. JYJ is still in this. He's got a good number of vessels. He has a third base online. And he's got four drop ships in a dream. Let's see if he can get in here. Lotto ships. We're going to roll the dice. Yeah, Try to get yeah. some damage that uh, could change this game. But uh, he has to keep it hidden. He can't allow Jadong to yeah. find out about this. Or he's just going to get shut down. Yeah, well, Jadong's using his combos to build up his uh, energy and ultimate meter to do some special moves. It looks like uh, JYJ is going to be... Doing a little bit of a gimbal gamble here and just uh, trying to roll the dice, go to the casino, see what happens. And sometimes that can be just what you need to come back in a game against Zerg when you're facing a four gas situation and the siege has kind of failed. Like, you kind of have to just go for it right now. And like, Jadon might be expecting this. It's exactly the kind of gambit that Terran players need to do in these situations. So Jadon might expect Oh, he might see it with the overlord just barely as well. It's calculation on Vector from JYJ. Very unwise for him to choose that exact path there. I'm brilliant. Really Pretty unfortunate for him. Now Jadong's gonna really smash this down, I think. It's gonna be a little bit rough for him. Oh, oh my god. Plague on all of this. And the Scourge are here as well. Two go down already. A third about to fall. The vessels go down as well. All these Marines are gonna get cleaned up, eaten up easily by this army. Lurkers over at the Wow, five. Five lurkers at top right. That is way too many. Way more than JYJ was expecting. And I don't like to call it games too early. Now that you should, but this is looking over. It's looking pretty brutal. I mean, we see some nice irradiates that are trying to, like, prevent the, the Scourge from sniping these, but it's actually not going to be enough. I think at least one of these vessels that are going to go down as well. Like, everything is looking rough for JYJ. Currently um, behind on supply, which is a devastating position to be in as Terran. has got his 2 1 upgrades at the moment, so he's ahead on. Uh, it's actually not ahead on upgrades at all. The Evo Chamber was slightly early from Jadong, so yeah, actually, yeah, like, Zerg right now is, like, winning on, like, every metric. It's really tough to come out of these holes as JYJ. He would need like a razor tricks while drops are going off, creating chaos to keep Jadong from just able to launch these cost efficient assaults out on the map. But because JYJ is unable to do that, he's just going to be like squashed between a rock and a hard place. And if that pressure doesn't turn him into a diamond, he's going to be turned into dust very soon. So. I think this is the moment when JYJ could uh, pause the game. Oh, what are these guardians doing here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hi. Bring up the climb, maybe. <laughs> JYJ could pause the game and accuse Jadong of map hacking. That one defiler just wandering out happened to uh, have the opportunity to cast the plague on, on that massive drop coming, that gamble play from JYJ. But that was just par for the course for Jadong sending out a random defiler to look for an opportunity uh, on some uh, marines and medics sitting out in the natural. He finds an even better target and now his position is insanely good. He will get this fourth base. JYJ does get the fourth base online, but he's just sitting here building marines and medics against a rapidly growing ultralisk army. I don't know if he's going to have the muscle to deal with this. There's Defilers out. This is not pure ultra play. It is backed up by Defilers, and this base is wide open. Jadong's going to hit this hard as he's taking the top center as well. This is the only advantage that Jadong, J or JYJ is ever going to have, is that he's got a small upgrade advantage for the time being. It's 4-1 Ultras against the three attack of the Marines. So that's not going to arrange much. Longer. So many vessels going down to the split focus of those Scourge. There's a few battle cruisers being fielded to try and put some pressure on these gas expansions, which is much needed as well. But Jadong's already ravaging the third base location of JYJ. He's not currently got much gas coming in right now, and eventually he's going to dry up. And the Ultra is in a high enough number that it can chomp through these small pockets of bio as well. So right now, like, JYJ is just sliding further and further down the ladder. And meanwhile, Jadong is able to, like, climb to the skies and ascend beyond to the heavens. That was sick play by Jadong. He had the Ultras and Defiler ready for a really long time uh, near that uh, third base of JYJ. And he was just 
waiting on Scourge to arrive. And as soon as the Scourge arrives, he goes in, it baits the vessels in, and he gets a ton of kills, kills the base, forces JYJ back, and takes that game. Super impressed by Jadong's overall performance. And he takes it home for his squad. Zerg with another win, Shun. We're on the rise, bro. Our, our stock is going up. Hey, man, we're pure of essence. Here we are with the point ranking Zerg on the come up. Got the, the diamond hands here, Shun. We're hanging yeah. on. We know that this the uh, this squad is going to the moon, yeah. <laughs> you like to see it as well. I mean, I know there's going to be some unhappy people in the comments, you know, the flatline Protoss squad, but it is what it is. They're just not performing, guys. We, you know, it's not it's not the map's fault. It's not anyone's fault, but the individual players themselves. They need to get it together, right? Let's not make excuses for them. Meanwhile, Zerg just like on a outer atmosphere course right now, like to the to the moon and beyond. Saying, I'm really happy to see it. Terran's still ramping up slowly. Currently still in the lead, five to four. Uh, maybe they can, you know, keep their lead in the, in the following weeks and you know, put Zerg back in their place. But so far, I'm liking this uh, Zerg trajectory. A lot of great games here today. Great performance from both Hero and Jadong. Uh, who else of note for this week of KSCM? I'm I'm shocked, of course, that a snow got taken out so early on. But I'm really happy for Speed mm. that he got his vengeance. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's really nice to see players like Speed not only get some stage time, but actually performing pretty, pretty well when they haven't. That means he's two and one this season, right? That's two, uh, sorry, two and two this season. So that's that's a pretty okay record. If you're going 50% with, with these boys, I mean, yeah, that's something to speak for. It's a mental victory for Speed. Uh, I don't know if he was even having his head in the game in that... Uh, that one versus Queen on Troy. Uh, it seemed like he was playing at a pretty uh, pretty high level, but once you take out uh, Snow, who kind of embarrassed you in ASL, uh, it, I mean, it, it's just got to be such a big hit for your oh, mental yeah. game. Uh, anytime you take him on in the future, you can at least remember that time you were able to get one over on him and, and you know propel yourself in the future, not, not allow that previous loss to hold you back so i'm really happy for speed i like that i like him as a player i want to see more of him mm -hmm. in the future hopefully we'll see him in other weeks of kcm but there's just so many great players out there right now shin we're blessed i mean we are truly blessed in this new golden era of the game i'm all about it saying yeah it's nice to see players like um saying uh, sorry play like uh, speed playing the role of like king leonidas and like showing that xerxes can bleed and giving hope to these weaker terran players that the likes of snow can still be dealt with by mere mortals that's right well this is it for our week number four uh we'll be back again next week of course with more hot KCM action. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Links, as always, are in the description. Go check out Shun. Go click the link to KCM's channel. Give him some love, too. We love you guys, and we'll see you in the next broadcast. Thanks, guys.